All right, hey everybody, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to use a push button with our Arduino in order to turn on an LED, but you could use that push button to do many, many different things that you will hopefully find interesting. So let's look, take a look at our circuit. And the first thing that we got set up is the five volts that goes into the plus so that we have all these different places to plug in where we want to do a five volt signal. And we also have this black wire plugged into ground and then that connects in to minus so that all of these can go back in the ground. And just like in the previous tutorial, I have a pin. In this case, it's pin seven and it goes from there into the breadboard, connects up into the anode of the LED, and then goes back to a 330 ohm resistor back into ground. Now, this is the new part that we did not cover last time, and this is our push button. And this push button, you have these, these two are connected to each other, and these two are connected to each other. These two, if the button is not pressed, are not, um, are not connected to each other, just like these two aren't. If you press the button, then everything's connected to everything. Then this goes down there, and this is connected to that, and that is connected to that. And most of the time, it will fit nicely over uh, the middle of your breadboard. You can see I plugged this in right there, so that if I press the button, this gets connected down into that. So I go in from five volts, and if the button is pressed, it completes the circuit. It goes through this 10K ohm resistor back in the ground. And if this circuit is completed, then this wire will send that signal back up to here into pin eight. And for both of these, it does not matter which of these pins that you use, any of the available digital pins will work just fine. Now, this resistor is a bit interesting. We used this resistor last time in order to limit the amount of current that the, uh, that the LED got so that we wouldn't break it. This is a little different. The reason that we have this here is that if this d uh, did not connect into anything, then if it just went back in there, then you would have a lot of like random inputs going into this button. And if we're trying to measure if it's either on or off, then you're gonna get a lot of random values and it's gonna be triggered in times where it's just not true. So this is what's called a pull down resistor. This resistor, it connects the this pin right here into ground so that it's always at a steady uh, zero volts when it is not plugged into anything. So this is a pull down resistor because it pulls the pin down into ground. If you were to do it up here from plus, it would be a pull up resistor because it would give it a steady five volts. But if you're using something like this, you want to make sure that you have um, that uh, that resistor, so you're you are getting a, um, a a more steady signal, and you're not getting these random spurious uh, inputs that are going to mess up your program. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the wiring. Let's. This is how it looks in my for my normal one. It's this is. But the animated one here on the computer is probably way easier to read. So let's get the programming. So in my void setup, just like last time, I want to do a pin mode. And it was seven was the output, right? Yeah, so I do seven. And we have an output. And we want to do one for eight too, so pin mode. But this one, so seven is an output because it is telling the LED what to do. This one, because it is listening for a signal from the button, it is the opposite of an output, it is an input. And then we are also going to use the serial monitor to uh, test it before we actually try it on the circuit. So you'll see what the serial monitor is in a sec. Uh, just kind of trust me on this for now though. Serial, so you're gonna write serial dot begin. And that is at 9600 baud, which is the speed that it communicates, the Arduino. And then up here, we want to have a variable. So a variable is just a word, something that we can fill with different value, uh, uh, with different values, and it can change its values as we need it. It's just like math in algebra. 
So you need to say what type of variable it is. It could be many different types, but in our case, it's going to be an integer. So if I just type int and then I give it a name, it could be anything, but this is gonna be about the button. So I'm just going to call it button. And now this lets the program know that there is going to be this variable that we are going to use and it is called button. So just get ready for it. Now, I want to set the, uh, that variable to if this is pushed or if it's not pushed. So if I do button and I set it equal to we had um, last time we had digital write in order to turn on the LED, this is the opposite. It's digital read. And we just need the number of the pin inside of it. So in this case, it's eight. So this variable is going to be set to whatever this pin is reading. And now we're going to print that value. So if I do serial dot print ln, that will skip to a new line after, which is very useful. And inside of it, I just put the variable name, which in this case is button. And then I'm going to delay it 200 milliseconds. So now it will set that, uh, it, it will read the pin, set the variable to that value, then it will print that value, then it'll wait a fifth of a second and do the same thing over and over again. So let me check that all of this is kosher here and good, good. All right, let's upload this. Okay, it's done uploading. I could open my serial monitor, going like that. And you can see that it is printing the value of button, which right now is zero because there is nothing going into it. But when I turn it high, it's gonna be one. You see, it could be zero or one, true or false, high or low. It is a Boolean expression. Okay, so those ones and zeros are wonderful, but let's actually use this for something practical. Let's use it to turn this light on. And how we're gonna do that is we are going to use an if then statement. They're kind of a foundational uh, construct of programming. So if this condition, whatever is inside of the parentheses is true, then something happens. So for example, let's make a true condition. So if one equals one, you can see that I put two equal signs and that's because if I put one equal signs, that sets a variable to something. So that's already being used for something. So if I wanna see if two values are equivalent, I am going to use two equal signs. So if one equals one, which it does, I am going to turn the pin on. Digital right eight, and I'm gonna make it high. I gotta spell digital right, digital right pin high. All right, so if I upload this, it should just turn on. Which it didn't, why did that not turn on? Oh, cause it's my input. That's, that's silly of me. All right, let's try this again. There we go, turns on. If I were to turn this into a false condition, like zero equals one, then it does not turn on. So um, that's not very useful. So what we need to do is we need to actually check this condition. So if button, if it equals one, then we wanna turn it on and we'll wait for three seconds, 3000 milliseconds, and then we'll turn it off. So let's try this. Do that, turns on, perfect. One more thing I could do if I don't like that equals one, I could kind of have similar language to the digital rights. I could have either high or low. So if I just did high and that works too. So uh, that's our push button. You could use that for a lot of different things, experiment, have fun with it and hope that was useful. Have a good one, later.